This past Sunday, we had our annual blessing of the animals. Now, a year ago, October 2019, I know it feels like an eternity, but I had the opportunity of blessing a pet chicken. I know, the sweet family in our church brought this ginormous chicken to the afternoon blessing ceremonies. Now, this chicken was not laying eggs. And so they thought they would bring the chicken to me and maybe, you know, we could conjure up some blessing that might produce some eggs for their lives. I never thought in my entire life as a Baptist pastor that I would one day end up blessing and praying over a chicken. <laughs> Today, our passage from scripture is a blessing of a stranger animal. But this story is not about Baptist pastor laying hands on an eggless chicken. Rather, it's about Israelite leadership blessing a God-forsaken golden calf. Today, we find the Hebrew people stuck wandering in the wilderness. At this point, the people of God are fed up not only with the food choices, but the forced isolation and the frustrating desire to return back to some type of normal life. I mean, what were, what were they supposed to do when they were expecting just a few months of quarantine in the wilderness and it ended up being more like 40 years? I mean, we can empathize, can't we? Maybe in this wandering season that feels never ending, we too might feel frustrated or fed up with the current situations and realities of our lives. The people of God are anxious. Anxious and fearful, kind of like us. But they are making fear-filled decisions that are going to end up getting them banished for a whole lot longer than anyone expected. And then they keep on with their fear-mongering, their desire to return back to Egypt. The entire community of faith isn't trusting God, and their lack of faith is causing some major setbacks. And the leadership, while well, they're growing weary too, and they're even starting to make some major mistakes. But, I mean, this is nothing new. Throughout history and even today, God's people continue to make decisions out of fear and anxiety. This morning, Moses is delayed up on the mountain. He's socially distant from the Hebrew people who are growing antsy in their anxiety of the unknown future. Remember only a few weeks ago, back in the land of Kadesh, Pastor Sarah preached on the story of Moses the rock and needing water. The people of God were their usual whiny hiney selves and once again were complaining to Moses. We're tired, we're weary, and we're so very thirsty. Well, on this course of executing God's game plan for water from the rock, Moses makes a grave error, and he's suspended indefinitely from the promised land. Moses fumbles the ball, ruining a perfectly good, miraculous moment. And today we are seeing Israelite leadership making some uh, not-so-good decisions out of their own anxiety and fear. But yes, it's always easy to blame the leadership when they fa fail, and even easier to remove ourselves from any responsibility of poor outcomes of communal situations. Oftentimes, regular everyday folks can't seem to muster the courage to call out corrupt decision-making from their leadership. Hmm. Instead, people, especially religious folk who follow leaders blindly, end up becoming complicit in those corrupt decision-making. Aaron and Miriam, two spiritual leaders of the Israelites, are stuck at the bottom of the mountain listening to the ongoing complaints of the people while Moses seems to be vacationing up on the mountain with God. 
This leadership is trying to find a solution to the current situation, but ends up choosing the wrong direction. The wrong direction that pulls the people of God back to how things used to be in Egypt. I mean, but the people are tired, they're weary from the wilderness, and they have lost their patience and perhaps even their faith that God is going to lead them into a new promised future. Now, at this point, they just want things to be like the good old days. Back in Egypt, when life wasn't really that good, but at least it was normal, and they felt like they had some level of control. But this is what God is doing. God is constantly creating a new community, a new way of being in covenant together with God and with neighbor. The old ways, the Egyptian days, were oppressive, dehumanizing. And that mentality came from the individuality of making life all about me. And instead, God, God is creating a community that shifts the mentality to we instead of me. But this is a huge psychological shift, a big leap of faith. However, the moment when life gets hard, that change seems even more unbearable. And the people of God return to the old ways that include praying to the gods of gold. The Hebrew people remove the gold that they brought out of Egypt and create a golden calf to worship, to pray to. I know this seems ridiculous, almost as ridiculous as perhaps a Baptist pastor laying hands on a chicken, hoping that it'll produce eggs. But the Hebrew people bless this golden calf, wanting it to give them new life, to be fertile in a way that would benefit them. And fertility gods were gods created by many cultures in this ancient world. People who wanted prosperity, they would create gods of gold hoping to be blessed with their best life now. Hmm. Oh, but we forget that the gods of gold have nothing on the god of old. The Alpha, the Omega, the god who spoke into the darkness, the oblivion, and created a world, a universe of ongoing new possibilities. The God who is less concerned about prosperity and more concerned about people. We, however, people of faith, often put our trust in prosperity, our trust in the economy, in the money we have in our bank accounts, in the stock market, in the bottom line of our church budget, we turn our eyes towards the gods of gold. But the gods of prosperity always end up leaving people in disparity. The gods of gold keep our eyes inward. However, the god of old, the God of all, turns our focus to all around us. Hmm. This year, we all have felt the burden of the bottom line. I mean, I know many of you have lost jobs. Many of you have lost income. Many of you have taken hard hits in your retirement funds. And it's hard when your hard-earned money seems to be disappearing. It's a blow to our way of life and a sucker punch to our faith. 
But in these hard wilderness seasons, we must keep our focus, our faith on something more than our current dismal situations. And I know the God of old might feel far, far away. Socially distancing on a mountaintop where we can't seem to reach. But we must remember that we are in this together. That we must lean on one another during these difficult times. That when we are feeling down, we must trust our neighbors, our community to lift us back up. When our neighbor is discouraged, we too must help hold the burden beside them. When our world seems dark today, we must reimagine a better world for tomorrow. Imagination. Imagination is more critical these days than ever, especially when we want to return to the old ways. The good old days that weren't that great anyway. Imagination is a spiritual practice of faith. Faith that pulls us out of our faithless funks. I wonder, I wonder what it would have looked like if the Israelite people would have chosen a different option, a different path, a different way to utilize their gold. Hmm. Last week, before the blessing of the animals, I reached out to the family with the eggless chicken. <laughs> I wanted to know, I mean, my ego really wanted to know if my powers of laying on hands created a buffet of scrambled eggs for them every day. So I called up the family. I'm like, how is your ginormous chicken doing? Is she laying eggs? <laughs> the family proceeded to inform me that the chicken wasn't laying eggs at all. I was like, oh, how sad. And that's because the chicken actually wasn't a chicken. <laughs> the chicken, as of last year, post blessing of the animals, started to crow every morning right around dawn. <laughs> I wonder how we can reimagine faith in our world today, knowing that we might not be praying in the best way, that we might be praying for eggs out of roosters. <laughs> And that kind of praying looks kind of like praying for salvation from golden calves. It lacks imagination. It lacks a faith that is open to possibilities that only God, the God of old, the God of all, can create for tomorrow. Today, May your faith be open to new possibilities, to new ways of being faithful followers of Christ in our world today. I invite you today to place your faith in a God, a God who is all about community, who is constantly bringing all people together, a God that sees beyond prosperity, a God that is nothing like the gods of gold. A God who is all about people. Amen.